Alrighty, new uh, map pool for Age of Empires 2 this week. And with that, we have Golden Pit back in the mix. This is a game that's going on right now between two players that are 2K+. I don't know who Blue is. It's apparently an Argentinian player. Kind of feels like it's one of the many Argentinian players' alt accounts, possibly. Or it's a newer player uh, who's really solid at the game. Uh, but we've got... We've got Gotten. Haha, <laughs> got it. Got Gotten. Okay. Uh, and then in the red, we've got uh, Timo. Also playing on the account not named Timo. I don't know what this means. Also, the stars on screen. A little bit flashy. But anyways, uh, Timo is a Moroccan player. And Timo is uh, a bit newer. Uh, again, probably a player who's never been in a video or anything like that from me yet. Uh, I am familiar with Timo. And Timo is coming forward with a villager already. We've got Gots for Timo, which might be why, because you get Loom instantly with the Gots. A big reason to send villager forward and be aggressive. Um, but, you know, I saw uh, the information about the game. Oh, boy. Scout dodging the TC fire. Goes down. I saw the Civ matchup, and I was immediately like, Showtel Warriors. I so badly want to see Showtel Warriors here. And Timo is oh my god Timo has walled in the other villager that was really quick so a little story about uh Timo by the way so uh I think he's like early 20s I was playing a player I'd never heard of him before and was around 2k or 2k1 and there's not many Moroccan players I don't know how many Moroccan viewers I have but there's just not a lot of players okay uh and so this is like five or six months ago something like that so anyways I was like, Maya? Um, there's a player who used to have this classic build and opening. He's going to try it again uh, it, from Morocco. And I casted him way back in the day. And his name was Maya. It was M-A-H-Y-A. -A. And he, we got to talking. He was like, no, Maya's an old man. Uh, I'm the new kid. And I was like, how old are you? And he said he was like 25. So I was like, I don't know about a kid. But anyways, um, he's, he's been around. right? So we've, we've had some chatter. I've played him a couple times as well. Um, but he continually tries to be as annoying as possible with this villager. Uh, what we haven't looked at is his eco at home to see if that's been going well. But he certainly has made uh, Blue work hard for all of this so far in Dark Age. But whoever this Blue player is has done a pretty good job. And the Blue player also has the Scout. Wait, is the Scout alive? Oh yeah, also has the Scout alive. So Red... I guess it found a lot of the resources already before coming forward, but still doesn't get to easily verify what the opponent's going for. Does Red have Loom? Yeah, you get it instantly with Goth, so he had researched it right away. And Blue did research Loom as well uh, when the Villager had come forward here. But for the time being, Blue's just thinking about building up. So, yeah, um, you know, Goths do have an eco bonus now. Their hunt lasts a bit longer. Uh, so that has definitely made Goths a bit stronger in my eyes. And if Goths get to late game against an Archer Civ, they're normally very strong with the Huskarls. But Ethiopians do have Shota Warriors. I'm thinking is there's still a Villager here for Red that we might end up seeing Shota Warriors. <laughs> there is no resource wasted on Wall Foundation stat. No, that is too specific even for Capture Age. Okay, but we know Red can quick wall right so red's probably confident enough to try and wall in the vill again yep okay blue understands now what what red's trying to do every time but wall him in blue wall him in let him go in there and wall him in <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad we joined this game <laughs> red's gotta be like you're kidding me bro are you kidding me how did I find this spot? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, well... <laughs> I've never seen that before. Red somehow wanders into this little nook at the edge of the map in the back of the guy's base. And now he's in prison. He's in prison. Guys, what you do is you give him until Castlage to decide if he wants to come to your side, okay? And most likely the villager is going to be very stubborn. He's going to be like, no, I will never join you. And then you bring in the monk and you convert him. And there's no way he can resist because at that point he will have been imprisoned for so long that he will have no choice 
but to uh you know but to switch sides now this is where it gets fun because his people have heard about it oh yeah we're storytelling now boys and girls his people have heard about it so okay i'm really gonna go all in on this so i need a name for this villager what would a goth villager be named he's currently trying to escape he actually might be able to escape on his own in which case blue screw you because you're ruining this whole story okay um you know, Dark Age Palisade walls are just simply not very strong. His name is Hans. Mm, Reginald. Hans or Lars. I like Lars. We're going to go with Lars. So here's Lars. And, uh, you know, the sad thing about him is that he lost uh, his other siblings in a tragic house fire uh, prior to moving over here in the Dark Age. So the only reason he really came over here is because he had to somehow make money for his family. Um, so he took a high-paying forward villager quick-walling gig. Um, so here he is. Uh, now, this these are his friends from uh, military school. Now, he had to drop out of military school due to the fact that he had to make money immediately to support his family. And it's a whole thing. So here come the militia. I'm not going to name the militia, too. But this is going to be man-at-arms, most likely, for Red. Red's resources are at the limit. Blue is walled towards the TC. And has arrived to the next stage and is going to go archers. And blue, you do not let this villager free. Well, you know what? It'll be a different type of story. We, we like it when our movies aren't predictable, right? That could be good. Uh, blue is the lower rated player, by the way. It's worth pointing that out. And blue scout went into the TC here, which is also hugely important because he couldn't confirm that this was happening. So damage control needed here with some quick walling. Very impressive. These aren't man-at-arms yet. And Archer ranges up. House is going to be up for Blue as well. But now Blue's got to, like, quick wall a bunch of things, and it's just super annoying. And oh, 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 yes! They're looking for his their, their buddy. They're like, where is he? And in the distance, they hear, I'm over here! In, you know, a voice which is very similar to how Lars would speak. And they're like, Lars? Are you still here? We didn't think you'd be alive! He's like, yeah, I'm in here. Help me. This, there's a guard at the gate, though, and he's going to call his men. So they're like, all right, we're not upgraded to man-at-arms yet because our people don't think we're worthy, but we can do it. We'll come back later. He's like, all right, I'm just going to make a house in the meanwhile. Where are you going, Lars? Okay, he's making the house. Honestly, a really good tower spot. <laughs> if Red confirms that there's villagers here... No! No! Blue! What are you doing? You're ruining it. Oh, Lars is dead. Oh, Lars is dead. And now they don't know yet, right? So that's, that's well, I guess technically they do. But Lars has been killed. So now it's up to their buddies to carry on the torch. And Blue trying to save this villager. The forward militia is trying to block there. That's actually a very impressive save from Blue. I probably would have lost that villager. And, uh, well, now we've got Ethiopian archers against Militia. It should be super easy for the archers. They did lose some HP, though. And, uh, you know, Red's gonna come in here with his own archers. And Red is trying to draw these archers away currently. Does have fletching. Blue does not. Blue, Blue's builds aren't quite as clean here. We're getting housed a lot. It probably had to do with how distracting Lars has been. And you can see Timo's experience now. Like, this is Blue just getting pulled out of position. Still no villagers lost, though, for blue, which is, again, impressive. Could be way worse than this. The militia are going to go down. Okay, guys, you want to play a fun game? What does an Ethiopian villager say when they get shot by an arrow? Ready? No, not that. It's also super quiet. This is horrible. Hold on, hold on. Ready? No, hold on. They're not even making noise now. They say ow. They go ow when you click them, which is my attempt at a dumb joke. But again, Blue doesn't lose a villager. Blue clears that up despite not having a lot of initiative. This guy's going to be saying ow in a second, unless this guy can be saved as well. The idle time has been way higher for Blue, and the efficiency has not been that pretty, but this villager could be saved as well. Are you kidding me? Wow. Okay, so Timo snuck a vill, but Timo's farming eco is looking great. Nine farms already. I guess versus eight. It's not too bad. 
But I mean, look, idols here, idols here. The blues just got idols everywhere at the moment. Needs to really s select those idols and put villagers back to work. I, I have the game sounds quite low uh, because I find that a lot of the burr, burr, clang, clang, all the noises in a game could get to be a lot combined with commentary. I personally prefer to have, you know, a bit more of a balance there. Militia goes down. KD is 8-3 to three for blue. Again, not too familiar with blue as a player. Red sneaking uh, or trying to sneak through here and is going to run directly into blue's army. And now red's going to lose his army. So red's been the aggressor. But red has... The attacks have been thwarted. And we will see if red will be able to avenge Lars. And we have a market over here now. And, you know, that's all well and good, right? Like, your resources are balanced, maybe head up towards the next stage, but this is always a little bit of a risky situation when you're goths and you're trying to get into Huskarls, right? Because you now have lost a lot of your army and you don't have any army to control the map, whether it's offensively or defensively, until you get to Castle Age. And Blue's going to move forward now. Uh, there is a stone in the back here. If you see that the opponent's going to go for Huskarls, I feel like you could go into Showtel Warriors, which is kind of why I wanted to join this game. It's been um, a fun game thus far. It's been a unique one, and that's a weak villager on a farm, and Red's going to see it. Bonk! Dead. Any other weak ones out here? Doesn't look like it. But yeah, that was sneaky from Red. He's like, he didn't think his opponent would realize he was there. But obviously very greedy because it's still very open on this side. You have to know blue has an army at some point and blue is going to find that vi Okay. Did red notice that? I don't even know what's happening right now. I mean, there's micro here. And okay, red did notice that. What elo these guys? Uh, blue is 2050 and Timo's 2150 right now. So there's a 100 elo difference. But I guess, you know, this villager could continue to wall. And you could tell that Red's a little bit nervous at the moment. Because Red knows villagers could go down. But, you know, still has two skirms. It's probably not enough to defend from this. But it's helpful. Kind of. And we're probably going to see the stone purchase for the castle. That would be my guess. But, man, if Blue kills, like, two or three villagers with this army before Castle Age, it'd be really nice. And you also know your opponent was on stone, too. And you're probably also going to see that castle. Look at them evacuate! They are running to the other corner! In remembrance of Lars! Sorry, guys. I was really hoping that villager would do something more in this game. But Lars is going to be a distant memory by the time this game is over. Man, it's so funny. Blue, if you only knew... <laughs> how many villagers were around here normally you're thinking the villagers are going to be here or here you norm normally think it's going to be closer but there is just so many opportunities red is just hiding the blue should cut to the left here to kill this villager so that's going to be villager number three killed in this game and oh creative actually from red loses the villa anyways and deletes the market but the castle's up um something that blue is probably fearing and some people are obsessed with this unit. We've got the Huskarl now on the way to red. Now, what we haven't talked about is how important the middle is. The stone of gold in the middle is, is just huge. Huskarl's with a lot of pierce armor here. Uh, after the armor upgrade completes here, it'll be seven pierce armor. Uh, fun fact, by the way, guys, you really should never have a need to research the armor upgrade when up against crossbowmen with the Husk in Castle Age because... The most damage you can do with a crossbow, uh, unless you're Bohemians and get chemistry, is 7 damage. So you getting going up to 7 pierce armor still means they're doing 1 damage a hit. I think I would always get it too. Like, I think it's something a caster would say. But I think if I'm thinking about this properly, there's actually no value in getting armor here. Unless you're, like, up against other types of units. But Blue's going to drop this TC in the middle. A little risky, right? Because the army's backed away. But there is a Monk there. And beautiful quick walls from Blue. That's going to be a Huskarl conversion. And very well played. You can also save the Monk inside the Town Center. That's not bad. Town Center number two now for Red. 
So focusing a bit more on the economy. And we also have a siege workshop. Armor helps when the crossbows are on a hill. Ah, that's a fair point. Okay. It's only 100 food at the end of the day. So I think... Yeah, I didn't factor that in. It's probably... It's never really that bad to get. That's a good point. And there's going to be hills involved as well, right? The Huskarl's looking to get in and raid. And Blue might want to fully stonewall this at this point. What I like about this, though, is that Blue has to react, and it gives Red an opportunity to attack the middle. Double Monastery, though, for Blue. Getting Sanctity for the Monks. Is on Stone. So on Stone heavily in the middle, probably wants a castle at some point, whether it's to protect the TC or to make Shotel Warriors. Guys, do Ethiopians get Redemption? I don't think they do, right? Maybe convert the Siege, if so. Okay, we're going to see a very safe castle for Blue. And Blue's going to drop it behind the TC. Normally not that big a fan of this, right? You want to keep your town center protected. But I guess he probably feels like he could throw the game if he tries it anywhere else, which is understandable. And Shotel Warriors could change the game for him. Shotel Warriors have tons of attack. They should eat Huskarls. Also, 18 on stone for red. Stone at home and stone in the middle. So that's going to be a castle to deny the gold. But you, you can't deny it. Right? Like, you could still take gold back here for blue. All right, there goes red. <clears throat> Red's going to see the castle now. And I think if you see showtells, you probably want to get your castle up sooner rather than later. And where's it going to be? Castle spot's so important here. It's not just the units. It's the positioning on this map. And it's going to be there. Oh, God. This could all fall apart so badly. Two Shotels could take out all the siege. And then the crossbows can deny the castle. This is so risky. And there go the Shotels. Shotel, Throtel, Holiday Inn. Villagers have to be pulled back. Ah! Now, the TC fire is helpful here. Castle denied for now. We'll see if Red really wants to continue with that. Blue did continue in underneath the TC fire. The Showtails don't have a lot of HP, but it's 16 attack, which is crazy. And it honestly feels like the game is decided based on if this castle goes up or not. Oh man, attack rounds don't hit. All the siege will go down. Red. The family of Lars building, they're trying to build this castle. The Huskarls are getting converted. Oh, boy. Red's got the Vill lead, too. Oh, what a great, great position for Blue right now. So from here, you don't have to do take any risks if you're Blue. You've had massive engagement. You could add your own siege to push the TC, build up towards another castle. But at this point, what you don't want to do is throw away lots of army, and you just kind of... This is deep breath time for you. You take a good fight, and it's just like, okay, do a couple other things, add a little bit of economy. Dang. Was T90 just on vacation on Monday or Tuesday? Dude, I was taking some two days off. Two days off doesn't mean vacay. It just means some me time. I don't get as much of that these days, which I thoroughly enjoyed, by the way. It was a great time. I had a very relaxing two days off. Glad to be back, though. Nice to see you. I will be on vacation in, uh, like, eight days, actually, so. <laughs> two days off as a weekend? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get, uh, I don't normally have traditional weekends as a content creator, so, uh, it's not as normal for me as it might be for the average employee. But yeah, I miss Loey the Legends, which is probably why you guys, uh, we're confused there. Okay, let's see how the Scorpions do. I feel like this is worth it, right? To take this fight. Because you will lose, you could lose your infantry, but if you take out three Scorpions, it's a pretty expensive loss for red. Maybe I'm wrong, though. I actually... Well, he didn't take out the Scorpions, right? That was actually not too good for blue. Wow, market's being used like crazy. It feels like red is trying to save for the Imperial Age here to try and get imp for a castle that could push this down in general i'm not sure i really agree with it that approach right now because you really have no army so it's very risky like if blue goes to your base you're probably 
going to struggle. But I suppose in theory, if you could make enough Huskarls at home to kill this, which he probably could before the show tells show up anyways, maybe you'd be okay. I think the game plan has been to make it messy for Red. Uh, and he has made it messy, but that, that mess has kind of affected him, him as well. And Blue's playing very well. Red's going to be really far behind in Villagers now, I think. Blue's still making Shota Warriors. Blue will lose the TC in the middle, though. If Blue were to find the wood lines in the back, it's probably game over. I just don't think Blue will ever go there. It's so funny. Blue hasn't found a wood line behind, besides this. He just isn't thinking about it. But Blue has found other areas to deny, so it's not like you have to rush around looking for that. More showtels running around. We have stone being sold, food being purchased. I think Blue also wants to head up to the Imperial Age. Um, I mean, the gold's certainly not there right now. I like how the showtels are just waiting, because you just want the crossbows here for Vils. And you know that if the showtels are away from your crossbows at any point, that Huskarls will show up. This gets interesting, because Red will be able to afford a couple trebs. And Blue's best unit is created out of a castle, guys. So this is obviously painful. But the Vill difference isn't that insane. In 20 seconds, the first treb will come out. Blue could lose the castle. And then what does Blue make? The comeback is definitely possible here. I also would like to see... Um, I'd like to see the trebs come from both castles here. I'd love to see uh, the treb come down this way. I know it's a bit risky. But you want those trebs as quickly as possible. Another castle. Oh, dang. But you've got to wall this in, right? The crossbows are at your base. You can tell Blue's like, uh-uh. We don't want that. Panic moment for Blue. Red taking extreme risks here with the castle positions. But I think that castle will go up. The treb will be out. Blue has 20 showtels, but Blue might not be able to make many more here. What on earth do you do? He fully abandons the middle. Dang. Does camp on that gold. Do you, do you try and go, like, two-handed swordsman here? Blue's unit control is really good. Like, if he can continue to get value from his army like this, he might be okay without showtels, but... Hmm... Uh, T90, is it possible to watch the full VODs from some of your tourneys like Hidden Cups, Wondering Warriors, etc.? When you say VODs, do you mean including countdowns and breaks and all that stuff, or are you just looking for the games? Uh, it does depend on the event. All the events that you mentioned, all the sets that were ever covered are on YouTube. Should be in a playlist, so there's your answer for, for one of those scenarios. The VODs themselves... Um, as Blue, as, as this has been a really good game here. Like, Blue's still, I think, leading in this game. But has to look for answers on unit comp. And is just going to fall back for this castle. I like it. Um, yeah, if, if you want, like, just the full VODs, you have to go to the platform we're streamed on, right? So, like, and, and they only... The VODs themselves are only saved as long as the platform holds it. So, I think the full VODs for Hidden Cups are removed from Twitch. Though we do have saved collections, which are a bit different, but basically it has the full days there on my Twitch channel. And then Facebook stores the VODs for a lot longer. So I think if you look for Wandering Warriors VODs, it's not in the playlist, but it's still there uh, on this platform. I don't know if that helps at all, but... Yeah, it's called a collection on Twitch, which is like a big... Uh, it's like kind of a clipped VOD, I guess. So it does include some of the countdowns. Oh, big shot! Ooh! Well, Blue's going to get baited in here, right? Blue could lose the Showtel Warriors to the Castle Fire. Still more than worth it there. Takes out the Manganel. Blue does have a castle here making Showtels and is making Bombard Cannons. So we were concerned that Blue wouldn't be able to make more Showtels. These things produce so fast, you only really need one castle for them. And now the, the task, of course, is to push the middle. Can someone remind me what the change was? 
Well, yeah, okay. So, can someone tell me what the uh, exact bonus is for the new unique tech for the Ethiopians? So, they lost Royal Heirs. Royal Heirs used to make Shotel Warriors produce faster. Uh, which always felt silly because Royal, like, Shotel's already produced quickly. So, basically, what they did was they removed that and they made it so Shotel's inherently just produce a bit faster now. Um, but yeah, um,. Royal Heirs is still the name. Oh, they just changed the effect. Okay, so new Royal Heirs adds extra attack for camels, I think. Um, but I, I forget if it also adds extra attack for infantry. I thought it was like a mix of camels and infantry. Shotels and camel units received minus three damage from mounted units. Okay, so it does affect both of them. And blue is being really patient here. Here, taking a, a pretty good engagement, all things considered. Takes the Trebs. Red is stuck on Huskarl here against Shotels. And Red does have gold control in the middle. This is the only gold that Blue has right now. And the Huskarls are in. Red has to somehow find a good fight. It's not going to be easy. But, you know, with Goths, guys, you just want to outproduce them. That's kind of the name of the game. And you see the distraction there? So he goes in, he knows that there's going to be a reaction, and then he was hoping in that time he could snipe the Bombard Cannons. This is really interesting. Blue is out of gold to mine right now. And the Huskarls are in. We've got three castles to produce Huskarls from, if you're red. Red's just waiting for opportunities. Blue seems to be aware of that and is waiting. And Villager's going down. I mean, this is adding up. But will the castle go down here? Chemistry's on the way now for red. So red wants his own Bombard Cannons. Which is smart, but it's still going to take so much time. I think the raid didn't do enough to distract blue. And I think for red to have a chance, he needed a follow-up raid to the gold. Because you're basically... You, the raid has to be bad enough where blue can't sit here with army. And it doesn't seem like that's the case right now. I think immediately, if you're blue, you send, like, at least five to ten bills and make a mining camp here. The second that castle's down and you could take some, just do it. And red could maybe try hand cannon. Gunpowder in general could be good. Goths do get hand cannon. But blue's playing really well. And you're even in a position now where you could drop a castle. Yeah, blue's playing this perfectly. It was very sloppy and futile. Uh, I think red was a little too greedy for the husk girls here. Uh, uh, oh man, can you imagine if he lost those bomber cannons there? Nice distraction from red, right? He's trying to buy time. So he's certainly doing that here. Shotel's going in. Shotel's will die to the castle fire. Not the prettiest situation ever. But he's got 31 Shotel's off of one castle. Are Shotel's meta now, guys? The Shotels are... I, I think they're a pretty insane unit, but I guess the issue is they're a bit situational. Gold mining is now here for blue. And slowly pressuring the middle. That's the objective. We do have hand cannons on the way. Huskarls get sliced and diced. The castle will go down for Timo, who is 100 elo higher than this guy. Again, I don't know who Blue is, so in my opinion, it feels like it's a Smurf account for somebody who's probably known. He's played pretty solid. Now, I don't even think you need to get the Elite upgrade for the Showtels here, right? I feel like numbers matter more than anything because the regular Showtels are already so good. The Elite upgrade's kind of pricey. Good raid here from Red. And Blue will lose one Bomber Cannon here, but he's still got so many more on that castle and does notice in time. He shoots down some of these hand cannons. Has 29 military versus just the 10 of red. And now red's soon not going to have access to the middle. Is this a smurf for Goku or Stark? Uh, there was no info on who this is. It's an Argentinian account. That doesn't necessarily mean it's an Argentinian player, but... That I looked at the Steam name. And they've been like 2k forever. So it's not like a... It's not like an account that was once 1300 that 
slowly over the course of the last two to three years became 2K+. Plus. This is definitely someone who is probably known. But could just be a known 2K, right? And some of the 2Ks are not necessarily known. He's 2050, so I think like maybe he's just been around there for a while. I feel like there's actually quite a few like 2K-ish players who aren't necessarily... Who even I wouldn't know these days. Because I just don't run into them as much. GG's called. Ethiopian's OP. That was a pretty sick game. We had the... The Lars villager, the, the sneak villager from Red early. And and honestly, I think, um, you know, while the Huskarls are a really strong unit here, I think for Red, just making a few more skirmishers in the mid game, not just completely giving up on Feudal Age Army, just making sure that the castle didn't have to be as panicked, that early castle age could be a bit smoother for him. I think that would have made a big difference. Um, did ultimately build a lot of castles in the middle, Blue got pushed out of the middle completely and ended up just being able to rely on one, I guess, two castle production of Showtels at this stage and uh, played very well. KD was very close in this one. We had lots of action back and forth. We had red and blue space. We had blue and red space and we had action in and out of the middle. So GG. Um, so uh, it's not it's not blue. It's he got him. Get it. He got him because he he won. Yeah, really funny. 50,000 resources collected. Again, like the player who's pushed out of the middle had more gold. But you look at the food. You look at those other things. Blue had a lot more economic buildup, it felt like. I think things were going fine for red until about like right. Okay, right at this stage of the game. You're on the way to Castle Age. There was a ranged army from your opponent out in the field. Right? I think this is a situation where... Uh, you know, you're not completely walled. Just just make some skirms, right? And I think Blue could have found more value from this army as well. I think Blue could have killed five, six villagers and only ended up killing one or two. But if you have skirms, then maybe you don't need to rush into the TC, uh, the castle as quickly and everything's not quite as panicked. But obviously, super easy for me to say from back here. And when there's archers out there, you might want Huskarls as quickly as possible. And you might think, T90, why make skirms when I have a Huskarl? Come on, dude.